What the goal for today is, is to show you guys just the basic setup of the uh, Oregon Music Educators Association and Solo and Ensemble. Um, and I, I want to make sure that you guys can get your contests open pretty quickly because it really should have happened last week, but it's been a, been a tough week to get through. So we're not going to be going through the whole scheduling process today. We'll do that in a training session. It'll probably happen in a week or two. The real goal here is to get you guys with the basic information that you need so that you can open up your events and have people start making entries. Um, you really can't do any scheduling until all the entries are in anyway. So we've got a little bit of time uh, in January that we can use for uh, learning scheduling and how to do uh, schedule reports and that type of thing. Uh, okay. Questions are certainly encouraged, uh, especially with just the, the two of you. Uh, it's a little bit harder for Dali, but um, if you want to go ahead and just type, oh, sorry, <laughs> it's okay. Technology sucks sometimes, right? Um, <laughs> but if you do have a question, Dali, just uh, feel free to, um, to just type it and uh, I'll take a look at it and we'll answer that. Um, First of all, everyone uh, who uses Opus Event is going to have to create a new account. And it's really quite a simple process. Uh, you guys have both been through it. Ooh, I think. Maybe Dali hasn't. Um, let me take a quick look. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think I've done it either. Um, no, Dali, you did have it. Uh, and Jennifer, so have you. Uh, it's the same account that you guys would have used uh, for either uh, honor group ensemble or honor groups this year or okay. with the uh, conference registration is it's the same login. So you guys both have those logins. Uh, but for people that do need to create a new account, uh, they just go to the link that's in your notes. It's contest.opusevent.com right here. And when they get okay. there, if they don't have an account, they just create an account and you just start following the prompts. And okay. it, it takes two or three minutes to do. It's fairly simple. Uh, so if you're, already, you're saying you can see me, but I don't do honor band or the conference. So is it okay. my OMEA? Um, no, it would have been uh, honor band or honor choirs. Um, either no. for either of the last three years. Uh, what about all Northwest? No, I teach middle school. Well, I don't know why you have an account. Uh, let me move <laughs> okay. forward. Let me move forward on this. We'll look up your account and see uh, okay. Okay. see when it was created. Okay. Um, and that takes us to the second one. Uh, log into Opus Event. It's really simple. Once you have an account, you sign in. I'm going to go ahead and sign in with my um, okay. With my account. And then before I do anything else, uh, you can just ignore what's on the screen for right now. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and, and um, uh, hang on. Let me look something up here. You are Karstensen, C A R S T E N. S E N. Jennifer Carson, oh, that's oh, you, yeah, right? Sure. Um, yeah, that's me. Yeah, was, that information. It was too. created uh, September 12th. Oh yeah, that must be my membership. Yeah, there's my membership down there. Okay, okay, yep. I got it. Uh, okay. Did you send? You say you're middle school. Did you send any kids to middle school, all state? No, I didn't. Hmm. Well, I have no idea why you're in the system, but you are. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll so, yeah. um, logging in, uh, very simple. They just get there, and I'm actually going to log in with a um, with a non-administrator account because first I want you both to see uh, what what a teacher sees. Oh, good for you, okay. Billy. You found your account and logged in. Uh oh, she's already way ahead of us. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Okay, so navigating around the teacher experience, once you sign in, the very first thing that uh, people see is all of the open contests. And I told you there was quite a list. 
there is. And uh, one thing that you can do is we allow you to filter things out. So we can just type in OMEA and search, and it will come up with just the OMEA tests or uh, with okay. the OMEA uh, events. And uh, all you need to do to select an event is uh, just click the select event. Okay, once you do, then you're at the home page. And I want to go back there really quickly to uh, show you a couple other things. Anywhere in the system that you're at, if you want to switch to a different contest, you just click the switch contest button up here. Okay. And so I'll go ahead and uh, click it again. I'll type in OMEA, hit enter, and I'll go, uh, the one that we're going to be using today is this OMEA District Zero test. It's uh, a contest that looks like a generic um, OMEA district. So as soon as you select a contest, you're going to be sent to the contest homepage. Uh, Jennifer, you asked, is there a way that they can be entering into the wrong contest? Yeah, the, the contest is shown at the top of every single page. Um, along with the date of the contest and who the administrator is, the email of it, of, of the okay. admin. Uh, if they miss all that and get that wrong, uh, yeah, I suppose there is a way that, that they could, <laughs> that they can enter okay. once improperly. And uh, if they do, well, as soon as we find that out, we can help them get that fixed. Okay. Uh, this is your home page. And it's always accessible by clicking on the little uh, home icon here. No matter where you're at in the system, like say if you're on your user profile, you can click home and it's going to take you right back. Okay? okay. And what this home page primarily shows all of the teachers is uh, you know it identifies what the contest is, the contest manager, the date of it, and it shows the schools and all the entries that you have in process. Now, currently, this particular user doesn't have even a school that they're working at or any entries. So let me show you how you do that. You can just click on the add a new location or add a location where you work. Okay. It'll pull up a list and we can look at the list and here's all the schools that we have on file in Oregon. Um, it's not showing up here, but if your school doesn't uh, exist yet, if it's a brand new school, uh, or it's a school that hasn't been in our system yet, um, there's an option in here to create a brand new school. And you can do okay. that. The teachers can do that yourself. I'm just going to choose Aloha um, High School. Okay. So now here's a list. I can add another location. Uh, so I can pick one. Um, there you go, Astoria. So we'll get all the A schools. So for teachers that work at uh -huh. multiple locations, this is how they do that. Uh, if you okay. want to get rid of a school, uh, you have a little garbage can icon right there on the left, and you just click okay. that, and it'll get rid of it as long as there are no entries uh, currently on file for that school. If there are, it'll it'll tell you you have to um, you have to remove those first. Okay. okay. Um, so once a teacher has a school set up, then they go to that uh, line on. Uh, that school line let me add that other astoria one just to show you uh, we'll do an ashland middle school so you see you have new entry links on both so yeah. if you want to do a new entry for aloha high school you click here if you want to do a new entry for ashland middle school you would click here okay uh, so i'll go ahead and do a new entry and here we go boom now they're on the entry form and they want to know what's what's the category uh, See, I'm, I'm applying for, uh, this is a flute, right? Mm -hmm. And what's the, contents, the contestant's first name? I'll pick up my wife, Wilma. And um, so first name, last name, the contestant email it, auto-filled all this stuff just because my browser remembered it. But normally okay. they're, they're going to go through and, and type all of this stuff, okay. right? Um, then they can choose that they want to be for comment only. Or okay. they're not, or they're not eligible for state, so don't put us there. And so that's, if, that's automatically if, middle school, right? Uh, yeah, middle school won't be an issue on that. Uh, everyone will be because uh, there is no middle school 
state. Is that correct? Right. Right. So the middle school students would click not eligible. Okay. Um, right. Yes, they would. Okay. Um, Dali, you said your page says Opus Register. It's because you went to register.opusevent.com, not contest.opusevent.com. All right. And now she's got it. Um, if your contest allows double time slots, here's the option for that. Oh, okay. okay. And some do, some don't. So it okay. just depends on what you do. Same with special requests. Uh, this contest, I have allowed special requests and I've defined a special request for AM, PM, and midday. And uh, I'll show you where you can go ahead and create your special request. But if we do an AM, I happen to set that up from 8 AM and or the AM slot is 8 AM to noon. So it'll do its best to schedule this entry, 8 AM to noon. Uh, midday, I think I put 10 AM to 2 PM. Right? Okay. For kind of a middle of the day. Maybe someone who has to travel a little bit further. And then by default, we assume they have no accompanist. Um, oh. And, okay. but I'll, I'll show you how to change that. And when they're done, that's really all they have to enter. You know, what's your category? What's your first, last name, your email, the options, your accompanist, then you submit it. When we okay. submit, we come right back to the home page. And now look at this. We still have Aloha High School. Now we have our first entry. Yeah. It's a flute. It's, uh, I, in this particular example, I settle up for, um, uh, I settle up for $15. Um, Dali, you're saying if we don't, will you remove that option? Which option are you talking about? Double time. Yeah, I'll, as a matter of fact, uh, I'll show that to you in a minute. Uh, you can you can allow double time slots or not in the contest settings. And if you don't allow them, it won't even show up. Okay. So if they want to go ahead and do another entry, I'll go ahead and pop in and I'll say, all right, this one's a, um, this one is a bassoon and I'll use myself this time. And I'm not going to do a special request, but okay. I am going to do an accompanist. So I just uncheck okay. this. And as soon as I do, mm. it goes down here and shows me all the accompanists that we currently have on file for this um, <laughs> contest. And it, there's a couple of test ones. So I'm going to pick uh, John, the piano guy. And okay. and he'll be playing piano. And now I can go ahead and save that. Now we've got two entries here. And they're both solos, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing I wanted to show you on here is what happens when we... Um, yeah, Dali, you can add your accompanist. It's the only way we can guarantee that there's no... Um, no conflicts in scheduling. And by the way, accompanists can also be students. And if they are, mm -hmm. we recognize that and we make sure that uh, there's no conflicts between their accompanist duties and their solos and any ensembles that they belong to. Okay, so I'm gonna add one more and this time we're gonna do an ensemble just so we've got a little bit of variety in here. So I'm going to do a small uh, string ensemble. And now notice it's not asking for first and last name. It's asking for um, uh, <laughs> the screechy violins, right? My favorite group. <laughs> I'm going to put in my email for, you know, we, we need a primary uh, ensemble email. You know, who, okay. who can speak for the ensemble? And then I'm gonna go ahead and click add a member. Now a small string ensemble is two to four members. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go add myself, uh, Rick Lyson, my email is set. And I pull down the dropdowns. It knows that we are a small oh, string ensemble. Yeah. So it says, great, Rick, what are you playing? It's gotta be one of these three. Well, I'm, a, I'm, I'm the number one screechy violin, right? And so now here's the one ensemble member. I can edit this ensemble by, or the member, by clicking little pencil icon mm -hmm. and pull it right back up again. I could delete this, 
but I, I don't want to because I'm too lazy. I don't want to type it again. Uh, so I will add uh, Wilma Lyson as a second one, and I'm also going to have her play violin. Um, and we are accompanied by the same guy, John the piano guy, or actually let's let's add a new accompanist. Oh, cool. So this is Frank, the other guy is his last okay. name, right? Okay. And his email is, uh, who knows, frank at opusevent.com. And by the way, the emails are important because this is uh, how they get their schedules. Is everything is emailed. So uh, wow. you need to encourage people not to put in fake names or, or fake emails. Okay. Because it, it won't help them at all. All right. Uh, we're all ready to go, and we go ahead and submit this one. Uh, notice the cost here isn't $15. It's now $17. And that's because I set the pricing to $15 for an ensemble and a dollar additional for each member. Now, okay. you, could, you could just charge a flat fee for the ensemble, whatever it is, uh, but we also have the ability of charging uh, for for each additional ensemble member. And I'll go ahead and submit this. Ooh, before you, now I'll go ahead and do it. So I submit it. Now look at this, now we have a small ensemble. And now I can do things like, oh, I wanna show ensemble members. So I can check this box. Okay. It's refreshing. Now, now I'm looking at all of the ensemble members for all of the different entries that I've got. I can click it again and that'll just suck up and go away. Um, teachers also have the ability of typing in um, filters. So they could type in a, an ID number. Each one is given a unique ID. Um, okay. You could also do something like last name. I want to see all the license and search. Great, it's just us two. Or I could say, I want to see all of the license who are in a small, uh, who have a small ensemble. There aren't any, all right? Um, because the name of the ensemble uh, is not licensed. It's something else. It's the screechy violins, right? Mm -hmm. So you can do that. You can select by location. You can select by category. I want to see all my cellos and make sure that they're all in. So they can really filter this down uh, as much as they want. Uh, this page is also used uh, in a couple of different ways. You can go ahead and select uh, Rick and Wilma here, and you can say, I want to email these kids. Now, this is the teacher saying that. I'm going to email these kids because I need to get, you know, they have to bring me their payment. Right. And so here's an email that you can go ahead and, and send them, and you could include the schedule link. Now, it's not appropriate right now because we haven't even created the schedule. But if you went ahead, if a teacher went ahead and checked all of his entries and did an email and included the schedule, it would send each one of these kids plus each one of the ensemble members their full schedule for the contest. What room are they in and what time do they have to be there and what are they playing? Okay. Okay. Uh, the other thing that you do on this page is pay for things. So if you just wanted to go pay for Rick's entry, you can pay the selected items. I just selected uh, Rick's. Um, Delete, can the accompanist get their schedule? Absolutely. You'll see that in a few minutes. Okay. Uh, go ahead and pay selected. We owe $15. Um, you're on a secure credit card screen. Um, oh, okay. And they enter the information and submit it and pay it. That pays for that. Now the balance would be zero dollars if I finished it, finished it off. Okay. And mm -hmm. uh, once they paid for it, they can always get receipts either at the school level or at the individual level, and get their credit card receipts. Okay. So this is the home page, and this page, the home page the contest select page right here mm -hmm. is the second page and this page the entry form 
Those are the only three pages, oh, four pages, sorry, the credit card payment screen. Those are the only four payment screens that, um, that teachers actually uh, see. Danny, you're with us. Welcome. Um, yes, uh, Danny's asking um, if you can do POs. And yeah, you can do uh, POs and you can do uh, checks and adjustments and scholarships. And I will show you how to do that when we get to the setup portion of it. Okay, so it's these four pages are, is what uh, is what the teacher sees and that's their extent of what they can do in uh, Opus Event for Solo Ensemble. So it's just a very limited number of screens and they all, uh, they all operate the same way. Um, you can also click on any one of the uh, headings up here. By mm -hmm. default, they're all uh, sorted by application ID or entry ID. But if you want them alphabetical, just click on the, on the word name. Or if you want to uh, sort them by category, well, that's the same as alphabetical. Um, you could sort them by their balance. And or their entry costs. So you can do sorting and filtering to, uh, you can imagine, I mean, I, I've seen some teachers that have 60 to 80 kids um, at, at high school levels for bigger schools. And yeah, it's a chore for them to do that. So they may want to go and, and separate out and just look at specific groups of kids to make sure everyone's in. Okay, any, um, any immediate questions on this? If not, we'll move on to the next the next step. Okay. Is there, you know, in the ensembles, would there be a category for mixed ensembles, for example, saxophones and trumpets? Um, if you choose, that was not one of the options that, that we, oh, well, I take that back. There was a brass ensemble. Um, right. But, Yes, I'll, I'll uh, actually let's go ahead and move on because that's going to be what I'm showing you next is the setup. Okay, okay, thank so you. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and log out a list user. Um, kind of commit this little screen to memory. See, they just have a home button. Uh, they can contact us. Uh, they can go into their user profile, and and uh, they can edit this. Um, you know, they can edit it and say, well, I've moved, here's my new address, or here's my new phone number. Uh, they can change their own username, which is their email or their password. So they have all the capability of doing that themselves. But if I log out here, and then I come back in, and I'm gonna log in uh, with my account that has like God rights on this, so I can do <laughs> anything. Okay. And of course, I did, didn't even put in the right password. All right, notice on this one, look at all the menu options I've got. So oh. this is much closer to what you guys have. Uh, we still need to go in and find our OMEA event. Look at all of them now. I've got the mm -hmm. District Zero test, which was open just for that one little test user that I was using. But here's all of the other districts that mm -hmm. are available. And I know I told you this morning in the email that these would be available for you tomorrow. Uh, they're actually available right now. Um, Delia has probably figured that one out since she logged in with her um, with her user ID that she can actually see her district. I can't remember, Delia, what are you, District 3 or District 1? I can't remember. I think it's District 1. Um, so she she can go ahead and see her event and she would be able to go in and edit it. So I'm gonna go ahead and select our test event again. And notice that the home page that I get on um, still uh, looks, uh, it's not the exact same because I have different events or different uh, entries, but the home page as the administrator is still all there and I have to add my location and I can add entries. And the reason is, is just because you're the event manager doesn't mean that you can't um, add entries to the event. Okay. And so uh, this portion of it works identical. You've got a little bit more things like you have a move button over here and things that are just for administrators um, or event managers. But for the most part, 
um, this is the same. Like if I go into uh, this entry, I'll go into it and I see an admin only box that we didn't see before. Mm -hmm. um, that only shows up for event managers, but the whole bottom of the page, it's all identical to the other one, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the home page. Now, uh, the next thing I wanna show you is the entry list and how you use these different menus. So I'm gonna click on manage contests and here's all the different things that you can do for managing a contest. You can do scheduling, you can look up, you can look at the company's list and you can actually merge a companies together. You know, if, if, uh, if one, one teacher calls in the company as uh, uh, Susie Jones and the other one calls, calls her Suzanne Jones and it's the same person. Once oh. you find that out, you can actually merge them together because we don't want them to be two different companies. We want them to be one. You can post payments. Um, Danny, you asked about POs. Yeah, you can post PO payments, check payments. Uh, you can enter your ratings, enter your winners, uh, print forms. We allow you to print, uh, if you want, uh, certificates of completion, including signatures and the score that they got. You can also print adjudication forms. Uh, that get handed right to the judge. Um, I'm not even going to go into the manage region, state, and state statistics. Uh, I'll just tell you it's uh, it's not going to happen this year, but uh, it sounds like next year Oregon State, all state, is going to go with us. And when they do, they'll actually wind up sucking the winners right out of your contest. Nothing needs to be re-entered or anything wow. like that. So uh, that's why this is there. And you normally won't see this. I'm seeing it there because I'm a sysadmin. So I have all sorts of rights in here that I probably shouldn't have. So what I wanna show you first is the entry list. This is kind of your go-to place for what's going on with my event. And when you first pull it up, you're gonna look at a list of, by default, it comes up here in teacher view. So I'm looking at, at all the teachers. It's Rick Lyson and VB Rick Lyson are the only two teachers that have done any entries. Um, Rick has two and VB Rick has three entries. So as I'm doing this, if I go ahead and just click on Rick's name, I, I'm, I'm not logged in as VB Rick. I'm logged in as Rick. Over here, you can look up in the upper right, I'm hello, Rick Lyson, right? Mm -hmm. But if I click here, I actually go to VB Rick's homepage. I'm viewing entries submitted by VB Rick Lyson. So uh, if uh, Danny's name would have been up there, I, we could have clicked on his name and we'd see Danny's uh, entries and you can zoom all the way in and you can do changes. You know, you're, you're the administrator of the whole, uh, of the whole thing. So this uh, entry list, gives you the capability of really becoming a teacher and going in and maybe helping them or seeing what they've done. You can also look at it by location view. Oh, now nice. we, have, we have five entries from Aloha High School uh, I, and I have no others. But now we can look at the entry view. Here are five entries. And again, we can filter by ID or name. And if we click on this, um, we'll go right into that person's or that individual's entry. We can also click the email button and it will bring up an email to Rick at Slow Drift, the entry name, and you can type whatever you want. So communication is fairly simple with these guys. Uh, the accompanist view, Here's the accompanist that we have, and you can email them and you can see how many they have. Um, you can also go into a student view, which is a little bit different than the entry view. And for example here, it's showing me as a flute solo up here, but it's also showing me as one of the members of, this, of a small string ensemble. Um, and same with Wilma, she's doing a flute, but she's also a member of the small string ensemble. 
Mm-hmm. And then I'm also playing uh, bassoon. So I, you know, basically you get a listing uh, by student of everything that they're doing. Uh, we're not going to see anything on here uh, quite yet because we haven't assigned judges, but it'll show you uh, what, how many time slots each judge has and how many entries. And then this one, which gives you a real nice uh, summary. And so here's all of the different uh, instruments that we're allowing on here for, here's our winds and percussion. Here's our strings right mm-hmm. there. And here's vocal. So you can look and say, well, we're a week from closing registration. Where do we stand? You know, what, mm-hmm. what are our totals looking like? Okay. And that'll also give you totals at the bottom. You can very easily just uh, highlight this stuff just like that, copy, and it'll paste directly into Excel for you. Mm, nice. Okay, so the entry list, just kind of a, a quick way of um, getting around. You can also email uh, anyone you want. Let's say that you wanted to send out a note to teachers reminding them they only have four days left. You could select all the teachers, type whatever you want. Here's where you can include the schedule, a list of winners later, list of ratings after the contest is done. Um, you can include the accompanying schedules. Uh, oh. af- after we do scheduling, you just go into the accompanying view and select, say select all pages and email. And you just say, you know, here is your schedule. Here it is. And include the schedule link and, you know, say it's a contest schedule or whatever day it is. Send it to them. Every accompanist gets a uh, an email with a link that will pull up their live schedule, even if it changes. Okay? Mm-hmm. looking to see oh yeah uh Dilly, so that's your um you ask can they accompany us get their schedule yeah this is this is how they do it is after you're all done scheduling um you go ahead and send out those schedules okay and I, i'm not going to go into showing you what that looks like right now that's kind of next set of training um how does how do you set everything up uh, under the setup menu? You can go to contest settings and that's where there are a lot of pages and a lot of options. And um, the general settings are just that it's, you know, the name of the contest. It's um, uh, it's who's the administrator and what email address should people send questions to if they have them. What time, uh, when does the contest run? Um, and when does registration open and when does registration close? Then I've set all of your contests up to, they're not open to the public. They require a NAFME uh, valid login, uh, a, a valid NAFME account. It's like we got someone else coming in. Can't tell who they are yet. Um, so the only way they can get in here is if they actually have a, um, uh, they actually have a valid NAFME membership affiliated with their account. And it looks like uh, Kevin Egan is on. Hi, Kevin. I'm Rick from Opus Event. <clears throat> so that's the general settings. If you change any of these, um, like we just changed the title to uh, OMEA District Zero Testing, you need to be sure and save because that's how it'll get out there permanently. So general settings and each one of these is described in that document I sent out this morning. Um, Billing, you can pretty much ignore this. Uh, You won't even be able to change anything. This is how we bill uh, OMEA for this. So it's just information for us, but but it's always available for you to look at 
uh, also if you want to know how much this thing is is costing OMEA. Contest terminology, we have four different uh, levels. We have a contest type, a con contest category, an item, and then a user. And you can choose what you want to call these. Some people don't call them teachers, they call them directors. Uh, and if you change these labels, it will change all of the terminology on all the pages. So it, it will no longer be the teacher homepage, it will be the director homepage. Uh, so you can change that if you want. There is a custom content that can be changed. Um, and I'll show you an example of that. On the contest home footer, you can go type some information. This is uh, info specific to this event. I can go ahead and save it. Now, if I go to my contest home, notice that this is info specific to this event. Well, I just put a little sentence like that, but it could be a whole page of information on the rules, on um, uh, why the costs went up this year. I, you know, I don't know what, what it would be, but uh, basically you can put any content that you want. It'll show up on their home page. Uh, and you can look through the other ones. There's payment instructions. Um, Danny, uh, when you asked about POs in the payment instructions, you could go in and say, um, you know, if you uh, pay via PO, you need to, right? And then, oh, you know, where do you send it to? What date does it have to arrive by? That type of thing. Okay. I'm just going to cancel that one. So there's custom content available. Uh, here are your judges. You have a list of judges. You uh, are going to create a new list of those before the contest, but you don't have to do it before you schedule. You can go ahead and do the scheduling. Scheduling is all done by the room, and you don't have to have judges in. But I'll go ahead and add another one, Rick the Judge and my email and my, I'll just use my cell phone. So it just adds a second judge. <clears throat> and then those judges can be assigned to time slots a little bit later, we'll see that. And again, just like everything else, if you wanna delete something, all you gotta do is hit the trash can. It'll uh, tell you that you're about ready to wipe out some data and that's okay. Uh, if that data cannot be deleted, for example, if you try and delete a flute instrument, but there's already entries for it, it'll come up and tell you, no, you, you cannot delete that. There's uh, current entries for it. If you delete all those entries, then you would be able to delete the uh, flute. Okay, Danny, you asked about uh, payment options. Uh, here they are. You can choose, uh, by default, you're all set up for uh, users to use credit cards. You could also allow them to use purchase orders and you could allow them to use check. Um, and maybe you just allow the, you don't want to allow the users to add on a scholarship. You probably just want to make it the administrators do that. Um, for each contest, you'll have to look at those and decide if you want to, um, if you want to accept checks and POs. I know it's probably historically the way it's been paid. Uh, if you do it this way, uh, that means that uh, everyone needs to pay via credit card and you guys don't have to handle any money. Uh, at the end of the event, you get a check from us for the net amount uh, that was uh, paid out. So it's, uh, it's up to you, it's your choice. You can do it uh, either way you want. Okay, um, next one is pricing. Here's how you uh, price your entries. Uh, you can have one price for a solo entry, a non-ensemble entry, a second price for, a solo, or for an ensemble entry, and then you can have an additional cost per member. Uh, I saw one district today, I think it was 12 or 13, not too sure, that they actually charged $15 or they charged like $10 for a solo, 10 for an ensemble, 
but then they charge $5 additional for each ensemble member. But they also had a maximum. As they said, once you get $40, mm -hmm. uh, we're done. And so that that's how we have implemented that. And you can also override pricing. I I, didn't, I haven't seen anyone that's going to need to have to do that, but you could override pricing so that you charge totally differently for small ensemble versus big large ensemble. Um, or you can charge differently for vocal than you do for um, for strings. Uh, so you do have the capability of overriding that. I would be surprised if you guys have to override that any of those. The ratings by default, I've set up the, the typical, you know, one, two, three, four, um, comment only and no show. Uh, I understand from talking with Danny uh, just a couple of days ago that some of you may uh, spell that out and have superior, you know, uh, actually the word spelled out fine. If that's the case, you just delete all these and go ahead and add in the new ratings that you use. And uh, each one of these ratings is uh, very simple. It's, it's just a rating title. It's a text field. And what order do you want it to sort in? And if they get that rating, are they eligible to move on to, to the parent, to the state contest? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's ratings. Scheduling. Here's what you get to choose for scheduling. Uh, I think Delhi, you asked, uh, can we get rid of the double time slot? Boom, there it is. Took it out. Mm -hmm. um, you can lock entries, you know, after you're all done scheduling and you want to lock it just so no one pulls a trigger and moves someone when they shouldn't. Um, do you want to let the event manager do special requests? And then do you want to allow the teachers to do special requests? And I think from what I've seen across the board, all of the OMEA districts allow the teachers to do special requests. So we'll let them do both. You can limit the number of entries by a company. So you can say, yep, 10, mm -hmm. no more. Uh, that's your choice. If you don't care, uh, just leave it at 999. And that just means that you'll have a more difficult time scheduling. But uh, it will still work. Uh, you can determine the number of minutes between scheduled entries for accompanists. If they're in the same room, a different room, or, and a different building. Most of you are just one building uh, events, but you will have to decide. Um, I know in Washington, they tend to go with zero uh, in between as long as the accompanists stay in the same room. And then 10 minutes or one time slot's worth to get to another room. And uh, for entries, the students themselves, yeah, this is pretty typical to be 10 minutes between, um, if they're in the same room, uh, maybe 20 minutes or, or more. Um, and the teacher, uh, that's actually not active right now. We're not even using that. We just do our best to give the teacher uh, hope that they can get to everything. Okay, um, security, fairly easy. Uh, you, these are all the people that have access to the event. And when you click on their name, or access to managing the event, you can see everything that they get to do. Mm. And I'm currently set up as a, as a full manager. Um, if you want to add someone, like I'll add, uh, I think, yeah, I'll add, is that your last name? Yeah, Danny Mitchell. So I'll search for Danny Mitchell. It finds him. He's down in Albany. I'll go ahead and add him, and I'll say, oh, he's a, um, he's a contest accounting person, oh. which means he can get to the home page, he can get to the accounting reports, and he can get to uh, post payments. But he can't see anything else. All right. And then you can go ahead and save those. And now we have another manager. I could later pull them up and say, I just want to clear all permissions for Danny, save it. All right, now he's gone. He's no longer a, a manager for this event anymore. So you can maintain your own security and decide who who's going to get in for uh, what purpose. All right. 
Uh, special requests. I had shown you that we have, uh, I've defined AM, PM, and midday. Uh, you can do, uh, you can add other special requests. So let's go ahead and do one here. Um, let's say they can only perform at the EO day, at, at end of day. Yeah, we say, well, uh, the end of day is um, 3 o'clock, 1500 to uh, 1700 to 5 o'clock. And by the way, for all times, you don't have to enter them as military time like I just did. Mm -hmm. uh, you can just click the time and, and you can go right up here and say, great, it's until four. So you can enter your times however you like. We'll, we'll take them like this, 1500, and then it'll convert that to 3 p.m. Uh, if I do um, 0300, uh, it's going to be 3 a.m., right? So... Uh, you just need to find the way that's easiest for you to enter times. When we save that, now EOD is now an option that everyone will see on their uh, entry. Okay. Um, winter codes, I set up the normal ones. Winter, first alternate, second alternate. If you need more than that, you can add them right here. Uh, don't want you to worry about attributes at all. Uh, don't even use them in your contests. Uh, locations, you don't need to worry about it. Uh, we'll take care of that. Uh, the only other thing I'd show you here is user-defined fields. And you can put user-defined fields for any other information, like we've added one to pick up the grade. And so if there's other information that you want to get, like how many years have you participated in solo ensemble? Fine, you can gather that information if you want, if that's useful for you. Um, and you can add text fields and check boxes and radio buttons and dates and kind of anything that you want. Okay, so that's all of the setup options. And I would encourage each of you when you log in and take a look at your event uh, to go ahead and run through all these setup options. I'd first suggest that you just look at them like this. You know, don't change anything. Just kind of understand where they're at, um, and then um, so you know you know where they're at when you need to get to them. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next area and really the last big one that we're going to take a look at today. Um, good, we're doing okay time wise. Is the template. Uh, so we just did contest settings. Uh, you won't even see create a contest. Don't worry about that. And so the template is really where we define um, what are the instruments and voices that we have. So for this contest and all of the OMA contests, uh, first I have contest classes, and that is solo, small ensemble, large ensemble. And if I click on each one of these and take a look, uh, it sounds a little bit strange, but a solo is a minimum of one person and a maximum of one person. You have to be real specific describing things to computers. Uh, we are going to allow a solo to have an accompanist. So you could actually have, for example, an ensemble that, that you can't have an accompanist on. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do have some events in, uh, in Texas that we run that, that, do, that do just that. They have um, uh, a cappella groups that, uh, that they need. Uh, so a small ensemble is from uh, two to four members, and large ensembles are from five to 16. And all of them allow a company, and these last two are checked as ensembles, so we know how to charge them. Okay. So those are the contest classes. Then we have three contest types, and you may have one two or all three of these in your district event. Uh, winds of Percussion okay. has all of these different instruments in them. Strings has got the strings and the ensembles. And vocal has got the vocals and then like six different ensembles, three small, three large. So let's take a look at these. Um, the definition of these, well, first let's look at winds and percussions. It's just a description, and what order do you want it to flow in? And by the way, the order, if you look here, I've got winds and percussions at number 10, 
and I have mm -hmm. strings at 20 and vocal at 30. <clears throat> There's really no significance to what this number is. It could be one, two, three. I like to do them and I recommend that you always do when you're adding things that you leave plenty of space in between them. In case you want to slip something in between winds and percussion and strings, um, that you can make it sort number 25 and it will sort in between 10 and 30. Uh, or make it 15 and it'll sort after 10 and before 30. So I like I'd like to see everyone leave a little bit of space in the sorting. They do not have to be consecutive. Okay. All right. Um, so winds and percussions, it's, it's just that and a sort. Uh, the categories are a little bit more. We have a flute category. We still have a, so, um, a sort. And then it wants to know, well, what type is this? Is it a small ensemble, large ensemble, or a solo? So this is a solo. And then it wants to know, great, when we get to entering winners for this category, for flute, um, which ones are we using? Winner, first alternate, second alternate, and you can add new ones right here. Or you could take some away by just deleting them. But right now, these are every single category is set up for you already to have a winner, first alternate, second alternate. There is a level below this, and it looks a little bit funny for OMEA because uh, this bottom uh, level is the instrument. Uh, so it's a flute category with a flute instrument. Your categories and your instruments are all one-to-one. -one, so it looks redundant, mm -hmm. but I can tell you that um, how Washington does theirs, and the reason why we have this extra level is Washington has a category that they call flute slash piccolo that, oh. that will have both flute and piccolo in it. And they may have a clarinet category that would have clarinet, uh, alto clarinet, and bass clarinet. So oh. they tend to group things a little bit differently. You guys are all one-to-one, -one, which is fine. There's no problem with that. Um, but that's why there's that extra level. What will wind up happening, I'm just going to go over to one of the uh, solo applications, is notice that you choose a category, and just flute, and there is no instrument to choose. And we hide that because we say, well, there is only one instrument, therefore you have no choice. Uh, if you pick the flute category, you're playing the flute. Simple as that. If you went to Washington solo ensemble entries and you pick flute piccolo, then you would also have to say, I am playing piccolo in this. And the real reason they do that is because of their, um, uh, because of their state contest rules is they say, well, flute and piccolo, you can only send one of those, whether it's flute or piccolo, you can only send one to state. Uh, we won't take a flute winner and a piccolo winner. We'll just take your flute slash piccolo winner. So for them, it's it's just a little bit different rules that they, that they go by. Okay, so, um, Jennifer, I think it was you that asked if you could have an ensemble. What was the question? Yeah, um, it was mixed ensemble. Oh, a mixed ensemble. And yeah. are you when you're talking mixed, are you talking vocal here? Um, no, it would oh. not. Be, they would not qualify for state, I think, and it would be like mixed, like trumpets with um, clarinets. Yep, you can. What you would need to do is come up with a name for it, so it wouldn't be. Uh, okay. A, It'd, it'd be large mixed ensemble, right? And okay. I'll give you an example of how you do that. You go into winds and percussion and you'd say, I have a brand new category. Oh, okay. And it is called um, large mixed ensemble. And the entry type is the large ensemble. And then I'd mm -hmm. save that. And now it, now we've got it down here. Yeah. And now I have to add the instruments yes. that, yeah. that I would that I would allow in there. And then at that point, yeah, you could add uh, trumpets and saxophones and clarinets and I, you know, kind of whatever you wanted to. 
Okay. Uh, and but this list here was created with the state contest in mind, but there's nothing stopping you from expanding onto your template. Um, there is a problem. I uh, I don't want you to rename any of these state level ones. Oh right. Or state right. contest because that's how we match up. Uh, you know, if, if you spell flutes using Old English, you know, F L O U T E, and it's a flout, uh, fine. None of the flouts are going to state uh, because it's a computer glitch at that point. So, mm -hmm. okay. uh, but yeah, as far as creating new ensembles and things like that, no problem. Uh, by the way, I was just going to go delete this one out of my test data, uh, large mixed yeah. ensembles. I yeah. see hit the delete key, and what you'll see through the whole system is. Are you really sure that this is the last chance to back out, right? And say, yes, great, it's gone now. All right. So this is your template. And once you get that set, it it's really never going to change. It may change next year a little, but it won't change during the contest. You know, once, once you get started, this is what you're offering. So you want to make sure the template's correct. Okay, uh, I'm gonna take a quick peek. Uh, again, I, I told you at the beginning that we really weren't gonna be going into um, uh, any scheduling and stuff like that, but I'm at least gonna just give you a little tiny taste of it. And that's when you set up rooms and time slots. And I have none here. And it really, it, it's, a, it's the same kind of hierarchical uh, set of data that you've seen before uh, in the template. And we start out by adding a building. And so it's, you know, the big building. <laughs> um, and it's building number one, and it's at the front of the school, right? That's, that's where your contest is going to be. Great. Now we have a big building school. And now I go ahead and, and um, I go ahead and add a new room. I did get that. So it's going to be, I'll pick on room 214 again. This can be anything you want. It could be the band room, the choir room, it could be the cafeteria, it could be, you know, what, whatever you want. But you go ahead and save a room to it. And then uh, let's go ahead and pick this building again and we'll add another one uh, just to show you how multiple ones look. 215 and um, another room for stuff, right? Um, this takes a little while to build up for your contest. Next year, when you come back to us, we're going to wind up taking a copy of this whole thing, including the rooms and the time slots. So, oh, nice. so this is your, this is your worst year, guys. All right, <laughs> uh, you can throw stuff at me, you can call me up, you can yell at me, all that. But next year it'll be a lot easier. Okay. When you get to a specific room, now you can go generate a time slot, and a time slot can be called anything you want. Let's just call it foods. And I'm gonna say it's a 10 minute increment. It's on day one. We do multi-day contests if any of you have a contest that takes more than one day, but I, I haven't heard of that yet, so I don't think so. And we'll say, great, the flute time slots, we're gonna have them play uh, from 8 a.m. until noon. We think that's gonna be enough, enough to handle them. Um, we're going to go ahead and assign this uh, to the famous judge judge name here. Uh, mm -hmm. That's just the name of him. And we can prioritize eligible or not eligible. So if you have a bunch of people just coming in for comment only, you could put them in a different room with a different judge. Mm. And you can say, I want to put all of the eligible. I want to prioritize eligible. Make sure that we get all the eligible ones in front of this judge. Um, then you save. Once you save, you have a couple of things. We're running from eight until noon. You have you need to add uh, items, which are instruments or voices. So you can go in and you can say, well, I want to add my flutes. And they are top priority in this. And you know, just for the heck of it, I'm also going to add oboes, but they're a second priority. So if there's room for them, great. If not, no, we won't. You can also go in here and do time slot reservations. And there's District 13. Um, 
So I'll create a new reservation. Okay. And I can say at um, 10 o'clock for two time slots, so 20 minutes worth, it's, it's a break. Mm, cool. And so you can add in breaks, you can add in lunches. Uh, I've had one district ask me saying they have a bunch of snare people play uh, for very short periods of time, like four minutes each. Then they want to have a little, uh, you know, 20 minute um, seminar or session to talk with them about uh, as a group on how they play. So you could do that just with a four minute increment. And um, and then you can block out a bunch of time uh, at the end for the for the seminar part. Mm -hmm. So a lot of different flexibility in here. And I believe, Jennifer, it was you that asked about, um, uh, you know, how do we do with um, uh, how do you how do you handle uh, differing time frames? And it's mm -hmm. right here. Yeah, it's easy. Uh, and delete uh, do that again for lunch and break. Yeah, if I set this end time all the way out to uh, 5 p.m and said, all right, we're just one big knockdown set of boots and elbows, right? Then, yeah, you'd want to go ahead and add in and say at noon for six time slots, we have lunch. And that'll add down there. And then we can add an afternoon break at uh, three for two time slots. Break uh, slash crash, right? <laughs> It's about the it's about the time you just can't handle it anymore. Um, so you can do this, and you'll see when we get to scheduling. There's other ways you can actually build these breaks in. That is a drag and drop. It's it's just a lot easier, uh, and you get to do it visually in in the time slots. But you know if you get them all set up like this, flutes and oboes. This gives this coupled with go back to contest settings this coupled with all these little minute things mm -hmm. uh, is what allows us to do the automated scheduling and you may run the automated scheduling and find out we, we've got a bunch of flutes that aren't scheduled well there's no room for them so mm -hmm. maybe you need to open up another room for at least an hour or two because you've got six flutes that, that have no place to play in this schedule. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, um, I, I, I kind of wish, well, I actually don't want to know, but I kind of wish that I knew how solo chair worked for you guys, because I've never seen how that scheduling works. Ours is very iterative in, in approach. And what that means is, Usually I recommend, hey, take your best shot with the time slots based on what you've seen in years past. How much room do you need for flutes? How much for oboes, et cetera? Hit the auto schedule button. Uh, Jennifer, how many kids in your uh, contest, approximately? Um, hmm. Boy, 140? Okay, that'll schedule in uh, 10 seconds and it'll be done. Oh, wow. That's so cool. And then you can look at it and you'll see a list of what couldn't be scheduled or the other ways you'll see a bunch of time slots that have huge amounts of time available. And you yeah. can say, oh, God, I could cut these time slots back. We don't have to go to five. We can yeah. finish it too. So yeah. you essentially unschedule, which takes all of two seconds, and then go up, modify your time slots, and then reschedule again. And you may, you know, you may schedule a dozen times in an hour mm -hmm. that, until you get something that's starting to look pretty good and, and mm -hmm. that you want to go with. Okay. So that's just a little, a little look at scheduling and uh, kind of where we get going. Uh, but I would encourage you guys to, uh, everyone should have these notes. This is what I sent out this morning. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely um, encourage you to log into your event, and you should be able to do that right now, and go through these different options and just take a look at them. Now, unfortunately, when you go into the entry list, 
there won't be anything there because you guys have no entries yet. Um, but it's okay on your homepage right now to go in and put in a couple of dummy entries. Uh, mm -hmm. They can, uh, we can take them out very easily. Um, I don't know if any of you saw that earlier, but uh, I was here on an entry form. Here's one of my flute entries. And if you just scroll down to the bottom, you can hit delete and yes, and now mm -hmm. it's gone. Well, okay. Could not be deleted because it was probably paid. Uh, not yet. I don't know. Oh, I don't know why that could be deleted. May have to take a look at it. But uh, until you pay an entry, even the teacher can still delete them. As soon as they're paid, they cannot be deleted by the teacher um, nor the uh, managers but they can be canceled, but they need to be there so we can retain the uh, payment audit trails. Mm -hmm. Okay, questions here. Uh, let's see, got Kevin Egan, uh, we fill in empty time slots and solo rooms with non-competitive ensembles. Do we have to rename them or simply put it, them in manually? Um, fill in empty slots and solo rooms. I think, oh boy, how's that gonna work? You you can prioritize eligible or non or non eligible. If you do it this way, and let's just get rid of oboes, just say great, we have a we've got a full a full day room for flutes. It will prioritize all of the eligible flutes first. Then any additional slots, it will put in non-eligible flutes. And I don't know if that answers your problem or not. Um, it would be possible for you to go ahead and create another instrument saying flute, not eligible. But I, I kind of steer you away from doing that, I think, because uh, sometimes things flip to not eligible at the last minute. And that's going to be hard to do. So I, I think you're going to be able to handle it through the automated scheduling. Absolute worst case, yeah, you can do a manual schedule. And I'm not talking about the whole event, but you could schedule um, uh, just the um, just the eligible ones, and then go ahead and fill them in manually with the non-eligibles. I, I can't say honestly though. I can't say I've. Uh, I've seen anyone try to do that before. They just let the automated routine do it. Uh, any other questions out there? At our festival, okay. we have two administrators. Yeah, that's no problem. Okay. You, can have as, you can have as many as you want. You just go to the setup screen and okay. click on scheduling. No, click on security. Oh, okay. And, and add someone else. So, and then when the schedule is done, do we can we convert it to Excel and post it at our festival? Yeah, you can. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, we should have some entries. Entries by Cumbus. This is a, a real rough sample of. Uh, let me think here. Maybe all entries would be better. The problem is I don't have anything that's scheduled right now. All right. So if you look down here at the bottom, this is actually an all contest entries report. So here's the name of our five different entries that we have with their instrument voice. None of them are tagged to a building room or time mm -hmm. yet because we haven't scheduled. They're not tagged to a judge either because we haven't assigned it, but we do know where they're from. By default, all these reports come up in HTML. You can choose to uh, run it in PDF, just run the same report. Oh, I see. And now we have a PDF file of it. You can also do as a comma delimited file. Nope, mm -hmm. I didn't want to hit the print button. I wanted to hit the report button. And there's a comma delimited file that we can open up uh, direct with Excel. So if I just open that, 
I think I'm pointed to Excel. Yep, it just came up on another screen. So oh, yeah, yeah, here's here's that schedule report in Excel. All right. Okay. Uh, and you can also do a tab delimited, and I do that because a tab delimited, um, you know, never mind, it's it's not going to work. Tab delimited can be directly copy pasted um, from here right into Excel, but honestly, it's just easier to uh, to go run them as comma delimited. But by default, all the reports come out as HTML. Okay. I don't know what I've got going now. <laughs> and uh, the reports that you have, yeah, you can do uh, all entries, which is what we were looking at here. You can do all entries by accompanist, by judge, by room, by student, by user. Uh, you can look at payment detail, financial summaries, the winners, uh, and the ratings for all of the entries. And then there's also custom reports. So we can write you pretty much any report that you would want. Um, and I honestly, though, in the past three or four years, I think maybe I've written one custom report. So normally people are taking about to Excel if they want to do something fancy. Mm -hmm. uh, we do print, uh, where is it? Print forms. We do allow printing adjudication forms. Um, and certificates, I, the adjudication forms aren't even going to show up right now because we haven't scheduled yet. But uh, if you are interested in adjudication, I'll, I'll probably send out an email um, here in a couple of weeks and let people know and give some examples of that. But if you want to do adjudication forms, it essentially prints one eight and a half by 11 sheet uh, per entry that is all ready to be filled out, has all of the information on the student, on the school, on the teacher, on the judge, on the room. And basically they uh, do that, they circle what the uh, uh, what the score is and hand it back in and, and do whatever write-up they want to do. So uh, for some of you, you may be interested in that. I, I think about half of our contests uh, that we currently do are using adjudication forms. And the same, uh, probably even less, are using certificates, which will actually print out an eight and a half by 11 certificate uh, that is either pre-printed or just a blank piece of paper, uh, mm -hmm. either way. And it can include all of your graphics and things like that. So uh, we do those. Uh, other questions, let's see. Solo chair, uh, D, Delee says, solo chair worked okay if we set the right parameters. That took some learning. Uh, we have almost 400 kids. Yeah, it'll, I, I'm going to be very interested to see what you guys think about this as compared to solo chair. I have no idea because I've never seen it. Just never seen it. So, any other questions? Oh, we've got uh, Danny cut down the time slot for the room and then add in another instrument ensemble as another time slot. Um, yes. Oh, about Kevin's question. Yeah, you can. I think the real question is, is uh, whether or not, for Kevin's question, whether or not it's worthwhile putting in a separate instrument. Uh, that would really nail it. Now you have full control over it, but Seem, seems like some waste of effort too. Um, I, I guess in my mind there'd have to be um, there would have to be a um, there'd have to be a, a kind of an underlying driving cause of why you'd want to do that as a separate one. Uh, Kevin, no problem with being late. Uh, can they be scheduled after payment is sent? Oh yeah, one of my favorites in contest settings. In scheduling, it's right there. Do you want to schedule unpaid entries? And I always recommend that that is unchecked. You should never schedule an entry before it's paid. Otherwise, you're just chasing money for mm -hmm. who knows how long. Uh, I I strongly recommend that you that you consider just 
only checking the credit card box. Yeah, I know we make more money if you do it that way, but it's it's a sane way of doing things, you know, and just allow credit cards and adjustments so you guys can go do some adjustments if maybe there's a scholarship or something like that. Um, you could even do that. I, I've I've got several contests that will do this. Say, yeah, we'll do a check scholarship purchase order, but it's admins only. In other words, if they just say the only way they can do it is to send a check, fine, send it in. You can enter it and mark those as paid. But you know, one of the whole concepts of doing this thing online is that you you don't want to be chasing the money around. It's I, I've seen contest managers chasing money around that's over a year old. I'm sure you guys have probably done that too. I have. So just make them pay for it. Every, I, I don't know a single school. Yet. We do um, we do all the auditions, registration, and solo ensemble for 26 out of the 50 states right now. And like uh, honor group auditions, we take in about 30,000 a year. I don't know of a single school that has not been able to pay via credit card. I, I, I'm sure there was probably one that I wasn't aware of, but um, most schools have got credit cards. You know, you can go to the ASB secretary and borrow a card and get it done. Um, Danny, what, they just have to have access to Opus Contest for the ad, admin ad part. Um, yeah, any anyone that does have access can go in and, and change these yeah change these things uh so can we schedule those hypotheticals before they pay hmm yeah you could um the problem is though you're gonna have to leave that open schedule unpaid entries if you want to actually manually schedule them because i if this is not checked um you won't even see those entries on your scheduling page. So kind of a catch 22, Kevin, it's a tough one. Are you able to print labels for adjudication forms? Um, that's for delete. Yeah, I, um, in the, Adjudication forms, you can print them from here. Uh, what we would need to do is build your specific adjudication forms. Um, and I've got uh, Washington State, they print all of their adjudication forms. Uh, but they also have 19,000 kids total, so it drives them nuts to not have it. You can do that, or if you want to, you can go to reports uh, by room. Um, I'm going to do all entries because that's got some data in it. You can do reports by room and you'd have their ID number, their name, uh, their instrument voice, building room and time assignment, and just export that to comma delimited. It's in Excel. Now you can do a mail merge for printing labels if you would rather do it yourself. Any other questions, Danny, Kevin? You can choose when you run the schedule and whether or not you want to include entries that didn't pay. Yeah, you could. Yeah, Delia uh, says I am interested in the adjudication form. Yeah, I'll I'll send out some information on that. Kevin, me too. Oh, thank you, Danny. I'm glad it looks more user friendly. I kind of wish I knew what solo chair looked like. Um, I love it, Danny. That wasn't really a question, just me thinking out loud. If you think out loud, you shouldn't type it then, Danny. <laughs> uh, when you schedule two instruments in a room like French horn and small brass ensemble, oh, can you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and there's two ways to do it, right? And that's that is something I'd like to show you. Um, 
I'm going to get rid of these flutes. I want to do French horn and small brass ensembles. Two ways to do it. If we go in and say we want French horn, and we'll save, and we want small brass ensembles. Small, small, small mix, small treble, small bass. Okay, it's going to be mixed vocal ensembles, just because I can't find the other one. <laughs> Um, yeah, if you do it this way, it will totally intersperse them. I mean, there there would be no rhyme or reason to it. It's all random. So you may have a French horn, two ensembles, then another French horn. Your other way to do it, though, in the same room, is you can say, well, from eight until noon, we're doing the French horns, and supposedly that's the perfect amount of time for them. Then you go in to that same room and you add a second time slot, which is ensembles at 10 minutes increment. And you start at uh, 1300 and you go to 1700. Um, we save that. Then you go ahead and add your second instrument. Now they're um, small treble voice. Now they're in the same room, potentially with the same judge, but they don't have to be the same judge. Uh, same room, same judge, and uh, now they're completely separated. So we'd mm -hmm. have all of the French horns in the morning, and we'd have all of the uh, vocal ensembles in the afternoon. So yeah, you kind of have your choice on whether you want them interspersed. You know, if, if you were talking uh, flutes and piccolos, yeah, that make a lot of sense, or maybe it makes sense like with alto uh, or with uh, clarinet and low clarinet to go ahead mm -hmm. and just intersperse them if if it's okay with the judge. Um, least least gives them a little bit of variety. Uh, Kevin, we should all be using the same three thirty point forms. Boy, I'd be all for a common, I assume you're talking adjudication forms. And uh, Kevin and I would be all in favor of that because that means we don't have to juggle different forms for um, for different districts. And if you want to do that, that would actually save you guys money because you would have to pay us to create a custom form and if we only do that once and use it for 15 districts I, i'm fine with that i don't care oh yeah danny saying solo chair was kind of yeah it was a little dated very cody yeah uh if someone has that 330 point form could you guys send it to me so i can take a look at it Yeah, Danny, send me that District 12 form. I love how you guys call them districts, not regions. It makes me feel like, like I'm in uh, Hunger Games, not, <laughs> isn't it? The, uh, what's that? The, the tribute from District 12 will now come forward. Okay, uh, it's five o'clock. I think we're about done. Uh, if you guys have other uh, questions or comments, please feel free to email me and uh, I'll go ahead and email back the whole group. And um, remember that your events are out there right now. If you cannot get into them, shoot me a note, tell me, please tell me which district you're in. I know most of your names now, but I have no idea where the heck you're from in Oregon. So it, it'll save me a lot of time if you can always uh, put that in the subject line. That'll make things smoother for me up here. Um, and thank you very much for your time. As soon as the recording is available, I'll shoot that link out to everyone on the list, not just you guys. And so if anyone else wants to read it, it'll probably be in the morning. It takes a couple hours for go to meeting to, um, to process that and get it into an MP4. So, okay, thanks all. Thanks. We'll uh, you talk so to you again. All right, and good luck. I'm sure you'll let me know how things go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Yep. Bye-bye.